Hello gang, welcome once again to my office. This is the other side, the bar is over there, the desk is over there. We'll get around to it eventually. A lot of you have uh, given me a lot of comments about going and chartering in the BVI with the moorings of Marine Max. Now that we've provisioned, we got the boat, we know where we're going. Where are we going? I am here to give you a seven day itinerary that you can follow or not or just kind of mix it up and do whatever you want to do. I've been there a lot and so I've kind of seen a lot there and so I, I can think I can suggest a really great itinerary for you. So let's go to the BVI again. All right, to get to the BVI, look, there's only a couple of ways you can get into the BVI. You gotta go to Tortola. Tortola is the biggest island in the British Virgin Islands. If you look at a map, all of the rest of the islands are surrounding Tortola. So your trip, your charter trip, is gonna go in one direction or another. It's gonna go clockwise around Tortola, or it's gonna go counterclockwise around Tortola. So you gotta get to Tortola, right? Two ways. You can fly into Beef Island, which is actually connected to Tortola Island, or you can fly into St. Thomas. Look, if you're coming from the United States, flying into St. Thomas is the way to go. It's the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's great. It's easy. You get on a ferry and you go over to the British Virgin Islands. It's about an hour's long ferry ride. Very simple, very easy. They have cocktails on board. You get to Tortola and that's where you check in to the British Virgin Islands with your passport. So when you get off the ferry, there will be taxis there. These taxis, by the way, are not normal taxis. They're open air trucks with benches in the back. It's actually quite a lot of fun. A little shocking at first, but fun. Now it's time to check in and do the sleep aboard. Want to know what a sleep aboard is? Again, watch my other video. I've linked that uh, video, by the way, down here in the information below. So you do your sleep aboard, you do your provisioning, and now you're ready to go on the next day. Day one, where are we going? Let's take off. Where are we doing? Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> where are we going? Okay, on my sample itinerary, we're gonna go counterclockwise, okay? Which means we're gonna go towards the east first, and we're gonna go straight to Virgin Gorda. I like going to Virgin Gorda first because I get to the baths and I get the baths out of the way real quick. It, it, the baths are an amazing place. I'm not quite sure why they call them the baths. There's a bunch of huge rocks and the ocean kind of comes into the rocks and forms little pools, which I guess are reminiscent of baths. So I guess that's why they call them the baths. I just answered my own question. Anyway, this is a fun place to go to spend the entire day. If you want to do some snorkeling, there's some amazing snorkeling. We've jumped off rocks into the ocean, which is a heck of a lot of fun. So there are two ways of getting to the baths. First thing that you can do is just take your charter right up to the beach. Well, not quite to the beach. You can get a mooring ball, right? And so you lock off there. Then you can get in your dinghy and go up to the swim barrier and tie your dinghy to the swim barrier. Then you got to swim the rest of the way in. You can't take your dinghy up on the shore because of obvious reasons. There's swimmers there. You don't want to run over them, right? So the second way of getting to the baths is just go ahead and go all the way around to the north and go into the North Sound. The North Sound is a beautiful bay with a lot of resorts and a lot of restaurants. And what we would do is we would take a mooring ball at Leverick Bay and then call for a taxi or a cab. Again, another one of those big trucks with benches and stuff. And they took us over there. If you have someone, like my wife, for example, who doesn't like to swim in, which is completely understandable, this is a great option so that you don't have to moor over there and then swim in. You just go to Leverick Bay, tie up there, and you jump in a cab and he takes you there. Now, I like staying there at Leverick Bay. There are other options in the North Sound. However, the last two hurricanes have kind of limited our options. The Bitter End Yacht Club is an amazing place, or was, until Hurricane Irma. They are now rebuilding. If you go on their website, they have a really nice video about how they're rebuilding and what it's going to look like when they're finished. There's no finish date on the website, so I'm not sure when they're going to be ready for guests. You also want to visit Saba Rock. Saba Rock is literally what it sounds like. It's a rock and it's not even, not even a half mile wide and there's a restaurant on the island that you can just, the only way to get to it is with your dinghy and you get there and you have dinner, lunch, drinks, whatever you want. On their website, they say that they're opening early in 2021. They were also completely destroyed and devastated by the hurricane. Leverick Bay was spared somewhat and it came back over a year and a half ago and it's in great shape. So I recommend tying up there at Leverick Bay. It's a great place to have dinner. On Friday nights, highly recommend they have a barbecue. 
There's like 500 people at this place. I mean, it is a party, and there's a band playing. There are people walking around on stilts. There's bonfires, there's drinks galore. It is just a fun, fun night. And the night is topped off by one of the stilt guys falling into the swimming pool. And anyone else who wants to jump into the pool too. I won't say exactly who all did it in my party, but it was fun. Okay, that's day one. That's all in one day. Now we got six more days. Now I like to head north or northeast to Anagata Island. Anagata is the furthest away from Tortola. It's gonna take you about an hour or more to get there. Anagata is unlike any other island in the British Virgin Islands. All the other islands are mountainous, hilly, beautiful beaches. Anagata, flat, flat as it can be. It is a pink flamingo reserve. Not lying to you, they're pink flamingos by the thousands. So when you're coming into Anagata, by the way, you really need to strictly follow the guide of how to get in. And when I say guide, there are mooring balls. There's, a, there's a, basically a lane you follow to get in and get to the mooring balls. The reason is, is it's very shallow there. And so you don't want to end up with your charter boat being stuck on a rock a mile out because they're there, the rocks are there. So make sure you specifically follow the route in to the bay there where you hit a mooring ball. The whole point of going to Anagata is to get on a scooter and scooter around the entire island. What do you do when you get on your scooters? Well, to me, there are two different places to go to. If you go to the other side of the island, at a little place called Cal Rick Beach. Cal Rick Beach to me is one of the most gorgeous beaches I've ever seen in my life. And this little place, Cal Rick, is this little bar. They serve just finger foods and hamburgers and things like that, but you don't care about the food. It's about the drinks and it's about that darn beach. It's amazing. The water there is very calm, relatively, usually. And it's got this little bluish green tint to it. That's just a blast. And it is seriously the most chill place I've ever been to. You can spend the day there at Cal Rick or go to my other favorite place, which is called Big Bamboo. It's exactly what it sounds like. Lots of bamboo around, everything's blue. And what do you do at Anagata as far as dinner? Well, it's all about lobster. There are a couple of places you can go. The Wonky Dog is a very famous restaurant with great lobster. Potter's Bar is another fabulous place to go to. Somewhere on the wall is some handwriting that I may have had or done after a few drinks. I Maybe, I don't know. All these places are very casual. You have to order by 4 p.m. Now here's why, because you want that Anagata lobster, right? Well, they're actually gonna go catch it for you. So they need to know how many lobsters to catch that night. So if they have 18 people who want lobster, then they're gonna go catch 18 lobsters. And literally, they do it right in front of you. Especially at Potter's, when you walk on the pier there and you walk towards the restaurant, all the lobsters are in the water and as they see you show up, they'll pull it out do their thing and throw it on the grill. It's seriously the most authentic Caribbean experience you can probably have. So day three, let's head back towards civilization, so to speak. Now you're gonna to go to the north side of Tortola now. I usually like to spend the day on some remote island somewhere, like a little tiny island. And the dog islands are a great place to go. They have mooring balls, or you can anchor. They have private beaches. And I mean, these are like uninhabited islands that you can just hang out at all day long. The snorkeling is amazing. Then towards the end of the day, go towards either Marina Key or Scrub Island. Now, these are two completely contrasting things to do. They're right next to each other, so you could actually do both. Marina Key has mooring balls galore. Marina Key used to be a fabulous place with a couple of hotel rooms, an amazing restaurant that Hurricane Irma just flattened. I was there about 18 months ago and they had rebuilt somewhat. They are serving food and the beach there is amazing and the snorkeling there is outrageous. Now, right next door tempting us is Scrub Island. Scrub Island is the closest thing to a five-star resort you're gonna get on the British Virgin Islands. It is an amazing place. Now, I personally, because I like comfort, I personally will grab a slip at the marina. Call ahead, reserve a slip, I'll bring the boat in. And so when you have a slip, you are then entitled to the spa, to the swimming pool, to the swim up bar, and to reservations at their restaurant. This is quite the contrast from Anagata. Day four. Now we're gonna head further west and we're gonna go towards Jos van Dyke. But before we get there, I'm gonna stop off at Guana Island. I like Guana Island for a couple of reasons. Number one, I love Monkey Point. Monkey Point 
is again outrageous snorkeling. I know I keep saying it over and over again, but you're at the British Virgin Islands. What do you expect? We like uh, taking the dinghy out and hitting a couple of beaches. After that day adventure, then I make my way to Yost Van Dyke, the famed Yost Van Dyke. Now there are two bays there. One's called White Bay and one's called Great Harbor. Now Great Harbor is where Foxy's is, okay? So grab a mooring ball there and then call Foxy's or dinghy in and make your reservation. You do need reservations because some nights it's, it's bumping there. Bumping. How you like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so Foxy's, if you haven't heard about it, it's world famous. It's out on the beach. The food is great. Barbecue type stuff. And then the DJ starts or a band starts and then it just gets crazier from there. If you want a wild Caribbean night, Foxy's is the place to go. Also a little tip, they have a store there to buy your t-shirts and what have you. It closes early. So don't expect to stumble over after you've had five or six drinks at 10 o'clock at night and get a t-shirt because they're closed. They close that sucker like around five or six. So get that done early. The only danger about Foxy's is, is you gotta get back to your boat. So let's have a designated dinghy driver, shall we? Because it's alluring this place and you just, next thing you know, it's, it's, it's tomorrow and you're still there having a Mai Tai or something. Anyway, then the next morning, you gotta go to Soggy Dollar Bar, right? The whole trip is not complete unless you go to Soggy Dollar Bar, which is in White Bay, which is right next door. So you got a couple of options. You can let go of your mooring ball, go about literally seven minutes, and now you're in White Bay and you have to pick up another mooring ball, if you're lucky. What I like to do is keep my mooring ball at Great Harbor, get in my dinghy, and go around the corner. Now, it's a little bit of a white knuckle ride sometimes, depending on the waves, but I don't have to move the whole stinking charter over there, right? So we just dinghy over and we spend the day at White Bay. Now look, this beach is exactly what you've heard. It's the most gorgeous beach you've ever seen. And the bars are exactly what you've heard of. Soggy Dollar Bar is amazing. Great drinks, great bartenders. They have hot dogs and hamburgers. Hendo's Hideout, which is another establishment right next door, I highly recommend. Great food there. There's five or six places down the beach. The chair rentals, there are no rentals. First come, first serve. All you gotta do is buy a drink and then you can use their chair. It's great, it's awesome. It gets really crowded. People get really inebriated. So the obnoxious level kind of gets high sometimes. But it is just the quintessential hang in the BVI beach day. And you want to spend it there at White Bay and ring up that bill at Soggy Dollar. I have left a lot of Soggy Dollars at that bar. Now, if we're not too inebriated, it's time to move again. I don't like spending two nights in a row in the same place. I don't feel like I'm getting my, getting my money's worth. So we're going to dinghy back over, get on the charter. We're going to lift up the morning ball and we're gonna take off. Now, I like going to Soper's Hole. Now, Soper's Hole got hit really hard by the hurricane, almost wiped out. From the pictures I see right now, it is gorgeous again. Pink and blue buildings, and one of my favorite restaurants in all of the BVI there is called Omar's Fusion. I don't know where this guy got his idea, but he's combining Indian food and Caribbean food, and it is outrageous. Please do yourself a favor. Spend the night at Soper's Hole just one night just to go to Omar's Fusion. It's worth it. Now it's time for day six. We're now going to go south to Norman's Island. Now, Norman's Island is a beautiful little place. Before we get there, we're going to stop at the Indians. The Indians is four or five little rocks just outside of the bay there at Norman Island where the snorkeling, again, sorry to sound like a broken record, is freaking amazing. You wanna go early, the mooring balls are hard to catch um, because a lot, it's very, very popular. Now, here's the good news, is generally people only stay there about an hour or so. So just be patient, and you can probably pick up a ball over there within an hour or so. Then we're gonna make our way to Norman Island. We're gonna get there around lunchtime. And now danger sets in again. Because Norman Island is a gorgeous place. The bar there is fabulous. The dinner is just wonderful. It's kind of a country club feel, actually. But before you get to the country club, you got to go to the floating bar called the Willie T. Now, the Willie T is infamous because you do two things on the Willie T. You drink and you jump. You drink from like a surfboard thing, which I've done once with my kids it was I took me a while to recover from that one and then you jump off and it's the sign says no jumping or diving but that's what you do so everybody just jumps off the willy tee it's a lot of fun you count how many times you jump you jump together you jump as a group you jump solo you're just jumping and drinking it's great it's a lot of fun warning the willy tee stays open pretty late just know that you may be trying to go to bed with a lot of singing and dancing and loudness coming from over the willy tee area when you spend the night at norman island okay 
Day seven, here we go, we're wrapping it up now. Now we're coming back around, we're gonna go east to Cooper Island. I love doing Cooper Island last for a couple of reasons. Cooper Island has an Airbnb sort of feel to it, right? There's a hotel there that has only nine or 10, 11, 12 rooms, something like that, really small. So it's very inviting island, it's a very quiet island. The restaurant is fabulous. You're gonna eat yourself all the way through the BBI, it's just great. That didn't sound right, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so, so, so what, what we like doing is we like getting a mooring ball at Cooper Island. Now, a lot of the mooring balls at Cooper Island need to be reserved ahead of time. That's a warning. Look, we just hang out by the boat at Cooper Island. It's McAneil Bay is the name of the place. We get our dinghy, we go in early for drinks. Dinner is fabulous there, as I pointed out, but here's the best way to end your trip. They also have a rum bar, hundreds of bottles of rum up there. And it's a great place to stumble to and finish your trip and then stumble back to the dinghy and hopefully make it back to your charter. And it's just a really chill place and a chill way to end your trip. So the bottom line here is be a good captain because happy crew is gonna make a happy captain, right? Don't do it the other way around. Don't, don't make yourself happy and hope that everybody else will be happy. Make sure that your crew and your family and the people you have on board, first of all, are safe. And second of all, are happy and that relies on you being a very courteous and conscientious captain. And I think that's an incredibly important thing to do if you're chartering your own boat in the BVI, is to be in charge of happiness as well as safety. And that means looking at the weather, looking at the tides, and making sure you're going to the right places at the right time. Please hit the subscribe button if you like what I'm doing here. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I'm going back to the BVI at the end of February. I will make a series of videos when I go there. And if you have any comments, please put them there. I will uh, answer every comment, suggestions, whatever. And again, every BVI video that I've ever made is linked below. You can take a look at it there and look at all the details of everything I've talked about. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.